Hey, welcome to iLecture Online, and here we're going to show you how to calculate the RMS velocity of three different kinds of molecules. The oxygen molecule, the carbon dioxide molecule, and the hydrogen molecule. And yes, in the atmosphere, oxygen and hydrogen are diatomic molecules. So, here's the equation. VRMS is equal to the square root of three times the gas constant times the temperature divided by the molar mass. And of course, let's say that we want to find the the velocity at room temperature, so T is equal to 20 degrees centigrade, which would be 293 Kelvin. Of course, we have to convert the temperature always to Kelvin. So let's start with the oxygen. VRMS is equal to the square root, and that should be an M right there, square root of three times the gas constant, which is 8.315 joules per Kelvin uh, per mole times Kelvin, I like to put moles first, mole times Kelvin times the temperature of 293 Kelvin and divide the whole thing by the molar mass. Now oxygen, the um, atomic number is 8, the mass is 16, atomic mass 16, but it's a diatomic molecule, that means it's 32 grams per mole and we have to convert that to kilograms, so it's 0 0.032 kilograms per mole. So the moles cancel out and see what we get. And you'll be surprised about the answer. 8.315 times 3 times 293 and divide by 0 0.032 equals and then take the square root of that. And believe it or not, these molecules are zipping along at a speed of 478 meters per second. That's actually faster than the speed of sound. Now you say, well, wait a minute. How can molecules travel faster than the speed of sound? Well, it turns out that these are molecules moving in all various different directions. They keep bouncing against each other. And it really has nothing to do with the speed at which sound travels through the air. This is simply the speed at which molecules travel through the air. Sound can travel through the air faster. Well, not, not in this case slower, but the speed of sound in the air is simply a function of the compression waves in the air, which has nothing to do with the actual speed of the molecules themselves. Now, I shouldn't say nothing. It has something to do, but they're not exactly the same. All right, let's see what it would be for carbon dioxide. Uh, CO2 VRMS is equal to, everything else would be the same, so it would be 3 times 8.315 joules per mole times Kelvin times 293 Kelvin, assuming the same temperature. Now, what is the molar mass of carbon dioxide? Well, for the oxygen, it's 32 uh, grams per mole, and carbon is another 12 grams per mole, so that would change that to 0 0.044 kilograms per mole. And so let's see what the answer is there. Now. That means that carbon dioxide is a heavier molecule, which we now suspect, because mass on the bottom, would cause it to move more slowly. Let's find out if that's true. 3 times 8.315 uh, times 293, and divide that by 0.044, take the square root, and sure enough, the speed is 408 meters per second. Now again, that's really fast. Think of it. 400 meters is like four times the length of a football field in one second. So they're moving really fast. That doesn't mean you have a carbon dioxide molecule that moves that distance in one second. Before it gets really very far, it'll bump into other molecules and it just keeps bumping around like that rather than moving in a long straight line. But now let's take a look at hydrogen. Hydrogen is a very light molecule, so we expect that one to move a lot faster. So let's find out. So VRMS is equal to the square root of 3 times 8.315 joules per mole times Kelvin times, and notice the temperature is the same for all of them, and then the mass would be different. In that case, a diatomic molecule of hydrogen has 2 grams per mole of mass, so 0 0.002 kilograms per mole, and that ends up being 3 times 8.315 times 293 divided by 2, ooh, divided by 1,000, equals n, take the square root, and notice that one moves at a speed of 1,912 meters per second. Uh, so notice that that one moves a whole lot faster 
because it's so much lighter, so much less mass. All right, but here's some three, some, some nice examples of how to calculate the RMS velocity of different molecules in the atmosphere. And of course, if the temperature changes, then of course the speed would change as well. And that's how you do that.